Let's talk about the shortest war in human history. No, it's not the Russo-Georgian War of 2008, or even the Six-Day War of 1967. The shortest war in history is the conflict between the British Empire and the Sultanate of Zanzibar, which lasted only 38 minutes. Watch this video to find out why this war ended so quickly and why it happened. Today, Zanzibar is a small island in the Indian Ocean that is part of Tanzania. In the 19th century, it was one of the most important economic centers in East Africa, mainly due to the slave trade, spice trade, and ivory trade. Until 1856, Zanzibar was part of the Omani Empire, but then became a separate state. Sultan Said's sons could not decide which of them would inherit their father's throne, so they began to rule separately. Thuwaini became the ruler of Muscat and Oman, and his younger brother Majid became the first Sultan of Zanzibar. The young state maintained close relations with the British Empire, but was neither a part of it nor a protectorate. In general, the Sultan retained sovereignty and control over his domains and trade routes. However, after the Germans entered East Africa, the situation changed. The struggle between Germany and Great Britain for this important region broke out. Under pressure from European powers, Zanzibar began to gradually lose its land and sovereignty. Its mainland territories were first leased by Europeans and then bought and annexed to their colonies. But the most important thing happened in 1890. As a result of the Heligoland-Zanzibar Treaty, the Sultanate finally lost its independence and sovereignty, becoming a British protectorate. This event caused discontent among the local population and slave traders. They were forced to change their lifestyle and give up their habitual activities. The new rules sparked protests and uprisings. There was a major uprising against the Germans in Tanganyika, which was barely suppressed by their army. The British administration tried to reform its new protectorate more gently. They preserved the Sultan's power, but significantly limited it. The rulers of Zanzibar generally cooperated with the British, but were not 100% loyal. For example, Sultan Hamad tried to pursue a neutral policy, trying to find a balance between Great Britain and Germany. For this, he received awards from both states at once, but on August 25, 1896, Sultan Hamad died suddenly. His relative, Khalid bin Bargash, whom some contemporaries accused of conspiracy and murder, announced his desire to become Sultan of Zanzibar and seize the Sultan's palace. He was a pro-German politician, so the British authorities ordered him to leave the palace and renounce his claim to the throne. However, Khalid did not comply with their demands. He formed a small army of 2,800 men and began to prepare the defense of the palace. This is not the first time he sought power. Three years ago, he also loudly proclaimed his desire to become Sultan, but backed down. Besides the soldiers, Khalid had several Maxim machine guns, one Gatling gun, two 12-pounder guns, and a 17th-century bronze cannon. He also had one warship, the wooden yacht Glasgow. Seeing Khalid's preparations, the British also began to prepare their forces. They had up to 900 local Askari infantrymen and a small contingent of British Marines. There were also three British warships in the harbor. The Consul of Zanzibar, Basil Cave, continued to send messages to Khalid asking him to leave the palace and disband his troops. In response, the latter told him that he would proclaim himself Sultan at 3 p.m., half an hour after the funeral of Hamad. On August 26, Khalid kept his word and proclaimed himself Sultan of Zanzibar. He hoisted his flag over the palace and celebrated with a loud salute. This courageous decision was immediately reported to London. Basil Cave was waiting for approval to start fighting. The next day, two more warships arrived in Zanzibar Harbor. At the same time, a reply came from London authorizing any actions aimed at removing Khalid from power. Admiral Harry Rawson issued an ultimatum to the self-proclaimed Sultan, demanding that he lower the flag and leave the palace by 9 a.m. on August 27. At 8 o'clock, an hour before the ultimatum expired, Khalid's envoy asked for negotiations. But here, the British were already determined. An hour later, at exactly 9 a.m., the order was given to begin bombarding the palace. Immediately, shells fell on it, causing severe fire and destruction. The palace was partly built of wood, so it was quickly engulfed in flames. At 9 hours and 5 minutes, there was even a small naval collision. The yacht Glasgow opened fire on the ship St. George, but was instantly sunk. After a few minutes of shelling, many people left the palace, including Khalid himself. 
However, in this turmoil, no one lowered the flag, so the British decided to continue shelling. After the flag was lowered, the British military stopped shelling and occupied the palace. They fired about 500 shells and about 5,000 bullets in 38 minutes. About 500 Zanzibaris were killed in this frantic battle, with only one soldier wounded on the British side. The self-proclaimed Sultan Khalid managed to escape to the German consulate, and power over Zanzibar passed to his relative Hamoud. The British demanded Khalid's extradition, but the Germans would not give him to them and smuggled him to Dar es Salaam. Did he have a chance to retain power over Zanzibar and repel the British attack? Write in the comments.